Welcome to Spirit and Truth Church, where we gather seeking the presence and the power of God. We are delighted to have you join our virtual worship service and embark on a journey of communion and fellowship, praise and worship, and diving into the life-transforming Word of God. Our senior pastor, Mark Moore Jr., leads us with passion and wisdom, empowering us to experience the fullness of God's strength, healing, and empowerment. We believe that God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Welcome to Spirit and Truth. To thank him for his presence. While you clap, begin to thank him for his healing power. While you clap, begin to thank him for his deliverance. Clap your hands, holy people, and shout unto God. That's a commandment. Shout unto God. Come on, shout to the walls come down in your life. Shout unto deliverance in your life. Shout until breakthrough in your life. Shout unto God. Shout unto God. Shout unto God. There's victory in yourself. Shout unto God. Come on, clap your hands everywhere. Give God glory. We come to give Him glory. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. He's mighty, he's mighty, he's mighty. And he's worthy of the highest praise. Come on, give it to him. Come on, give it to him. Come, come on, give it to him. Come on, set the atmosphere for what you need. Come on, set the atmosphere for what you need. If you need breakthrough, set the atmosphere for breakthrough. If you need deliverance, call on him. Call on him. Call on him. Hey. Clap your hands everywhere. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. Hallelujah to the name of the Lord. So we're calling you into this house. Come and see about me. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands, Joe. Y'all aren't clapping. Put your hands together, yeah. Corey, can I get some more of that track? Clap your hands.
come from God our help come from the heaven Lord God in heaven and earth Lord God we thank you even now God we give you praise we give you honor before we ask you for anything we thank you for everything thank you for your goodness thank you for your mercies Lord God we thank you God just for being even in the midst of your people God Lord even now we feel your presence and while you're here God we say just have your way Lord God Lord in the name of Jesus move among us in us and through us Father touch even now deliver save set free God we ask Lord God that you move like only you can God do what only you can do God and Lord we'll be so careful to give your name to praise God and Lord we just act like it's already done that we go ahead and give you praise for it right now because we believe God because we pray unto you Father it is so in Jesus name amen and amen hallelujah hallelujah praise the Lord um, if you're not standing please stand for the reading of the word this morning's scripture will be coming from Isaiah 40 28 through 31 hast thou not known hast thou not heard that the everlasting God the Lord the creator of the ends of the earth fainteth not who neither is weary there is no searching of his understanding he giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might he increaseth strength even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall but they that wait upon the lord hallelujah shall renew their strength they shall mount up their wings as eagles they shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Clap your hands and give God glory all over this room. The Bible declares that everything that has breath, praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. And we came for no other reason but to lift up his name this morning. He said if I be lifted up, I'm growing. Who's lifting him up this morning?
above all names. You're worthy of all our praise. Mighty are the works of your hands. Sing mighty are the works of your hands. Your name is above all names. You're worthy of all our praise. We sing mighty are the works of your hands. You look, where did you look? What did you find? Still couldn't find nobody, nobody greater. Nobody greater. There we go. Nobody greater. Can, can, can you all, all join the praise scene one more time? Say, search all over. You say, couldn't find nobody. Search high and low. Nobody greater, no, no. Nobody greater, nobody greater than you. I'm gonna see if you really have a testimony. Let's try this. Everybody say, Your name is, your name is above all names. And you're worthy of all our praise. Let me hear you say it, say, Mighty are the works of your hands. Say mighty are the works of your hands. I need y'all to turn it up a little bit in here. Say your name is above all names. You are worthy of all our praise. Let me hear you say it now. Mighty are the works of your hands. Say it again. Say mighty are the works of your hands. Hear the whole church say, mighty, mighty, say, mighty, mighty, oh, mighty, mighty, all the works of your hands, 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 come on, say, all the works of your hands, one more time, say, mighty, mighty, say, mighty, All the works of your hands are the works of your hands are the works of your hands We are the works of your hands Searched all over Said could find nobody I looked high and low Still couldn't find nobody Nobody greater Nobody no, 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 no. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. Somebody put your hands together and give your great God great praise just a little bit more. Just volume. I said, somebody give him great praise. It's Sunday morning. If this was an old school church, they say the same thing a little different. They just say, there's not a friend like the Lord, Lee Jesus. It's still Sunday. I see you back there. 
No, not one. Somebody ought to testify. No, no, not one. None else could heal all our souls. Diseases. Hey. Oh, no, not one. Somebody say, no, not one. This is the part that ought to make you happy today. I know that Jesus knows all about our struggles. I need somebody to share this at home. Your time that needs to know that he, he will guide us till the day is done. Oh, there's, there's not a friend like the Lord, Jesus. Let me hear the whole church say, oh, no, not one. Lift your voice and say, no, not one. Clap your hands one more time. Glad that Jesus knows all about my struggles, and He He will guide till the day is done. Oh, there's not a friend like the Lord. Jesus, lift your voice to heaven and say, no, not one, no, 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 not one. If you know that there's nobody like him, give him praise like you give nobody else. Come on. Y'all playing with it. Come on. Come on. I said, if you know there's nobody like him then praise him like there's nobody like him oh yeah 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 tell somebody say neighbor i've tried a whole lot of things but tell them can't nobody do me like jesus i've tried friends i've tried other stuff some have tried alcohol some have tried pills some of us have tried other folks some of us have tried men tried women but can't nobody you like Jesus. Yeah. I know that he's my friend. Y'all just sit down before we get stuck right there because I, I believe I got some real folk in here that can really testify. I've tried other stuff and couldn't nobody get me like Jesus. Some of y'all got high, but you find out ain't no high like the most high. Yeah. I said ain't no high like the most high. Ain't nobody. God bless you, have your seat. Nobody. Not my mother, not my father. Mm. Nobody. Not my sister, not my brother. Nobody. Nobody. <laughs> All right, I got to leave that alone. You only come to heaven and search with me. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody. That's why I praise him like I praise him. He got me out of stuff nobody else could have. That's why I bless him. That's why I lift him, that's why I shout, that's why I dance. That's why I run, that's why I leap. That's why I celebrate. Nobody. Come on out of there, y'all. God bless you, God bless you. God bless you, y'all sit down, sit down. I don't want to start no trouble here at the 10 o'clock service. But I wonder if I have anybody here that has a revelation of what your life would have been if God had not stepped in, if you could ever get a revelation of where you would have ended up, if God had not stepped in, let me tell you all in the praise. Why not take 30 seconds and give God something? Everybody, 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 give God praise. Help me out for the point. Oh. A long way to go today. Clap your hands, everybody, everybody. Ooh. I love you, Kyle. Hey. Nobody. I said nobody. Ain't nobody. Do me like you. He's my friend. He's my friend. Yeah. 
like that. Nobody, nobody. Oh. You know that he's my friend. Everybody say again, he's, he's my friend. Oh, oh, oh. say again, he's my friend. No, not one like him, say he's one more time, everybody say, he's my friend. He is my friend. Yeah. He is my friend. My very best friend. He is my friend. God bless you. He's my friend. What kind of friend? A friend that's sticking closer than a brother. Yeah, Lord. If you're glad he's your friend, open your mouth and shout right now. I said open up your mouth. Yeah. God bless you. Have your seat. Have your seat. Some trust in horses. Bless your praise team. Some trust in chariots, but we will remember the name of the Lord. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower. And the righteous run it and they are saved. Somebody tell me, what's his name today? If you love him like I love him, would you give him one more praise in the place? Everybody, everybody, everybody. He's a good, good God and we give him great praise. I'm excited. Uh, to welcome you here to this, uh, the house that God is building. And we're just so thrilled at what he's done and how he's done it. And, uh, you know, this is your welcome address. This is your welcome address. Yeah, this is your welcome address. This is your welcome address. Because you know what? Sister Tasha was singing so good uh, that I forgot there were two people on program to do the welcome. She was singing so good, I just, I just wanted to get up. And uh, <laughs> so now I'm doing your welcome address today. I'm Pastor Mark Moore Jr. And this is Spirit and Truth South. We're so glad you came. Are there any first time guests at our church? Because we don't have visitors. Visitors can drop in unexpected or expected. But guests have been prepared for. And uh, if you by chance are a first time guest, would you let us know uh, by just waving your hand at me? Any first time guests, let me know you're here. I think I have some over here. I've got some spirit and truth. Can we let our guests know how happy we are to have them? Come on, come on, come on. It only works if we all do it. Come on, can we love on them? We are so happy that you decided to worship with us today. Uh, we are so, so excited that you've decided uh, to be with us. Our ushers have just given you a beautiful card that has a QR code on the back. All I'm going to ask you to do is take your smartphone. I hope you have iPhones because I'd like to be friends with you. Amen. You can text me with no green bubbles. I will not allow it. I will not allow it. Uh, but uh, I want you to go ahead and take your camera out and just scan that QR code and just get checked in for us today. Uh, we want to be able to contact you and serve you. And uh, we are a giving church and we never want you to miss an opportunity uh, to receive something from the Lord and from our ministry and so if you would just scan and get checked in today uh, because we know that God has something special now normally uh, this would be the part of the service where we have you get up and walk and hug and they play best and then the pastor usually comes up then this is usually when that happens, but today's an unusual kind of day. Amen. So just tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, you're blessed. You're blessed. You're blessed. You're blessed. Amen. Amen. And so we're excited about all that God is doing. Can you help me online uh, or celebrate the online audience today? Can we thank God for those that are watching at home? Come on, y'all. We got a lot of people tuned in. We got a lot of people tuned in, and we're grateful for you. I want everybody at home and in the room uh, to hit that share button and join us uh, in the wonderful voyage of uh, digital discipleship and electronic evangelism. You never know what or who is on the other side of your share. And so we want everybody to hit that share button on today. And I'm excited because we are an active church. We are a going church. We are a growing church. And uh, I'm thrilled because uh, we're 
entering into a new season, a new phase uh, of our ministry here. We're entering into a new era uh, where we are beginning to really, really take our discipleship and our development and our training to a whole other level. We're taking it to a whole other level. And so on this Saturday, I want to make sure you know that we're calling all of our ministers and leaders together this Saturday for our ministerial and leadership institute. Can we give God praise for that? Amen. All ministers, all leaders, all aspiring ministers or leaders, I'm going to be teaching. We're going to be meeting at 11 a.m. there at the Temple Atlanta campus, and um, we're going from the meeting into prayer, and then we're going to resume the meeting after prayer for a little while as we really, really seek to become the church that God has raised us up to be. Somebody say, yes, Lord. And so no registration is required, uh, but we want you to show up this Saturday if you are a minister uh, or a leader or would like to be a minister or a leader meet us Saturday there at the temple but as great as Saturday is going to be oh believe me Sunday is going to be even better uh, because Sunday is baptism Sunday this week y'all yes 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 that's right we're celebrating the wonderful opportunity of being baptized in the saving name of Jesus on this coming Saturday it's going to take place really at all campuses and so if you would like to be baptized we need you to check your email check your text messages and uh, make sure that you sign up. We already have uh, over 30 something people already signed up uh, to be baptized. Y'all ought to celebrate that. Y'all really should. Amen. You ought to celebrate that because uh, we understand that baptism is a burial. It is the burial of my old, we're getting better, it's the burial of my old man, my old nature, my old life so that I can rise to walk in the newness of life. And so baptism Sunday is going to be amazing. But then I'm also excited. Y'all ready for this? We have some men in our church that are second to none. Can I get a witness in here? Oh yeah, we've got some and, so, and so men's weekend is coming. That's what I was leading up to right there. Amen. Men's weekend is coming May the third through the fifth. We want you to set your uh, notifications, set your reminders, uh, so that you can be there. It's going to be an amazing, an amazing time. Uh, I want you to know uh, that uh, Elder Wayne Martin is going to be preaching that weekend. Amen. This guy from uh, South Georgia. I don't know if you know Pastor Vance Robinson is going to be preaching that weekend. Oh, it's going to be a good time. And then on that Friday night, I'm going all the way to Memphis and bringing my brother, Apostle Brandon Clack, is going to be here. Oh, it's going to be a time. These services uh, on Friday, rather, are going to be held at the Atlanta campus. And then on Sunday at the 12 o'clock and the 4 o'clock, uh, I'm bringing all the way from Dallas, Texas, the international president of the Church of God in Christ, Superintendent Nathaniel Green, is going to be here uh, at 12 and 4. I'm telling you, you do not want to miss it. That's Friday and that's Sunday. But then Saturday is going to be an amazing day for our men's weekend as well uh, because we're going to have our uh brunch and empowerment uh, seminars uh, from 11 to 2 there at the temple and then all of our men we're going out axe throwing uh, that afternoon you don't want to miss it amen it's going to be a good time it's only $15 we want all of our men young men old men, uh, uh, little men, man cubs. We want all the brothers. Amen. Amen. We want you to go with us. If you're going to have to get a prostate check at 50, you need to be with us, all right? So I need you to be with us on uh, Men's Weekend. It's going to be an exciting time. But then we're doing something else. I want you to hear this, and I want you to listen. I want you to listen. I want you to listen uh, very carefully, because this is going to be uh, something that we don't do often, but it's uh, crucial and pivotal for where we are right now. I'm doing something called our conversation series uh, conversations with Pastor Mark Moore conversations that's supposed to be me but that's what they said I don't know who that is but that's I can see it a little bit. Amen. That's amen. Uh, but we're doing a conversation series uh, over these next few weeks. We're in the process, as I told you earlier, of really, really God has had us in an acquisition mode. We've been uh, gaining and getting, getting and gaining. And now that God has blessed us so richly, uh, things are settling out. Things are sifting now. And uh, it's time for us again to do uh, the hard work, the fun work of actual ministry and meeting the needs of those that are part of our assembly. And so we're going to be doing a conversation series over these next few weeks. Let's go to that next graphic because on uh, these specific dates and these specific groups, I'm going to be meeting. Now, Pastor, ooh, who's coming to preach? It's not a preaching service. 
Who is the choir going to be singing? No, they're going to be rehearsing a lot of those dates and we're going to work something out. Uh, but no, it's not that. Well, can I watch online? No, this is an in-person experience. What I'm going to be doing is meeting with these individual groups. Uh, for example, the men, Thursday, April the 25th at 7, I want to see all men at the temple. We're going to have conversation. We want to know what your needs are. We want to know as we're unveiling our men's ministry and how we're structuring things. We want to know what the needs are. We want to know what your interests are so that we can properly serve you. On uh, Saturday, April the 27th, right after prayer, I'm meeting with all of our women, every woman that's a part of our church and wants to have your voice heard. Uh, you want your opinions and your thoughts expressed on how we're doing things. I want you to meet me on Saturday, April the 27th. And then on Wednesday, May the 1st at 7 o'clock, the young adults. Now remember, there's a big difference between youth ministry and young adult ministry. All right. I told the earlier service, youth ministry, you need permission slips and, and, and you know, waivers and all of that. Uh, young adults, y'all got cars and jobs and all of that. And so those that are, I believe we said, what, 21 uh, to 35 are young adults. There's a, there's a, there's a ministry uh, that we're getting ready to really, really take to another level for the young adults. We need community. We need a safe space. We're in the city of Atlanta. You need a tribe, amen, to connect with. And so I want to see all of our young adults. On Wednesday, May the 1st, we're going to have real conversation as we're structuring things and then the same thing are happening with our singles on Wednesday the May 8th at 7 o'clock all singles if you want to have your voice heard and how we're structuring things and your pastor wants to know what's on your mind what's on your heart what are you looking for meet us on Wednesday and then we have not left our seniors out somebody say yes Lord for that amen I want all of our seniors if you've got an AARP card I want you to meet me on Saturday May 18th right after prayer amen if you get a discount at Denny's I want you to meet me on Saturday May 18th at 1 o'clock if you got to get up out the bed in stages I want you to meet me Saturday May 18th if you got peppermints in your purse right now y'all got it all right amen <laughs> It's going to be a good, good, good time. It's going to be a good time. All right. Are y'all excited about what God is doing in our church? Make sure I'm not the only one. Make sure. Make sure. All right. Well, since you're excited, let's keep that excitement going. It's offering time here in the sanctuary. Hallelujah to God. It is the time we have to give to the Lord, to bring to him our substance, uh, to return to him our gifts and return to him uh, that which he has blessed us to accumulate. Uh, we are a church that believes in bringing some of the tithe into the storehouse. Oh, I thought I was going to catch you slipping. We believe in doing what the Bible said. He said, bring all the tithe into the storehouse. Why? That there might be meat or provision in my house. I want to say it again. Our church is very active and you ain't seen nothing yet. We're going to a whole nother level. Uh, but with all of the activity and all of the great things that we're doing, it happens because of our giving. Let me help you. We're going to, uh, in this phase two at the temple, for example, we're going to be uh, putting a full industrial kitchen in that building. Uh, it's really already there. We just have to really redo it. And the space is already there. We just have to redo it and, and do everything right. And we're bringing in, again, industrial uh, strength, industrial uh, appliances and all of that. Stoves. And, you know, I, I, I said that sounded good until I started pricing it. I said, Lord Jesus, industrial kitchens cost a lot. Grease traps and all of this. I got done and, and I said, Lord, what are we going to do? We're going to get some George Foreman grills and some air fryers. And then, and then I said, no, I can, let me stay in faith. Let me, that's fear talking. I rebuke that. We're going to go ahead and do it right. Uh, but all of that kitchen, uh, yeah, we're going to fry a lot, a lot of chicken. We're going to fry a lot of fish over the years uh, that were there. But that fish and chicken and all that good stuff, donut sales and, and raffles, none of that is how the church of Jesus Christ is supposed to be funded and furthered. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with fundraisers and all of that. But the church, listen to me, is not supposed to thrive or die based on how many fried chicken dinners we sell this week. No, that should be for field trips. That should be for uniforms. That should be for, for, for side projects. But the strength of our church is in our tithe and in our offering. Getting a little, little boxy, if you will. We're going all the way. Uh, the strength of our church is in our tithe and in our offering. And so I want all of you all that say, Pastor Moore, God put me in this house. God sent me to this church to bless me. 
and because he sent me here to bless me I'm going to bless him I've received increase this weekend so the first 10% of what I got I'm bringing it to the Lord the first 10% of what I brought in this week I'm bringing it to the Lord those are our tithers those are our tithers and here's what you know or what you need to know about being a tither God says when you bring me the first 10% what I'll do is I'll rebuke the devourer off of your life isn't that good news I'll rebuke uh, the, the, those, those money pits off of your life I'll rebuke those traps for your finances that keep you in a cycle of poverty and in a cycle of bondage you hear me and so as a consequence as a consequence we're going to bring him the tithe and return it to him today but I want everybody to get your best offering if you will get your best offering if you will in your hand now pastor I'm sowing a $250 seed today there are several of you online watching me right now I want you to match your faith with mine I'm talking specifically to you at home right now there are at least five of you that are going to step out in faith and say pastor more I'm matching you with a seed of $250 there's an anointing for increase on my life and on our house I want you to tap into it now 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 uh, join us with giving online in that uh, uh, those giving options on the screen here's what I want you to do or if you're giving that $250 seat at home, I want you just to put that one word increase in the comment section on your cash app or on your GiveLify as we watch God work a miracle. Now in the room, our tithers are coming in a moment, but I want everybody that says, Pastor, you know what? Some of you might have that $250 that I'm standing with, but I want the rest of you, or whether you have that or not, to get at least a gift of $100. And I want you to stand all over the room, all of you all that are stepping out in faith. Pastor, I'm sowing a seat of $100 today. I want you to get it and stand. I want you to get it and stand. Where are you? Where are you? Bless you. There's one. Bless you. There's two. I like this front row. I need somebody else to get that revelation today. Amen. And step out in faith online in the room. Wherever you are, there are several more of you. I'm trusting you to step out in faith with that seed of at least $100. You all know that we're paying off our pledges and uh, getting ready to get that done. And uh, why, are we, why, are we, why are we paying off all those pledges? Because we got to finish phase two now. And then we got to do phase three. And I, I've got a vision. I, I've got a vision. I've got a vision. I've got a vision. We're getting ready to do some more work to even impact our community in another way. Y'all ought to say something to me in here today. And it's going to require our resources to do it. And so I want everybody that's tithing, come on, meet me in one of these side aisles, all of our tithers today. Those that have received increase, I'm almost there. Those that have received increase, meet me in these side aisles, whichever aisle is closest to you. You can make your way there. Elder uh, Matisse is on one side. Pastor Robinson is on the other side. They, they're both anointed. I think some of y'all are going over to Pastor Robinson's side. On purpose, because you, you think Elder Matisse is going to make you fall out. She, she's in a fallout season, real heavy right now. She's in, she in a knock them out season. Amen. Down goes Frazier. All right. Amen. All right. But everybody, Pastor, I don't have the hunter today. Get your best gift. I want to challenge everybody. Somebody say everybody. Get as close to a $40 seat as you can and stand all over this room. Get as close as you can. Warmth is, is, is what I'm looking for. And openness. Man, get out of that box. We're getting better. I've got a lot of preaching to do today. Hallelujah. Get your best gift and stand all over the room. We do things together because we believe that that's how our blessings are going to come. They're going to come together. We believe that God's going to do it not just for me but for everybody assigned to me. I'm not selfish. I want God. And I don't need him just to bless me. I want him to bless my whole role. Do I have a witness in here? Because if I'm the only one in my neighborhood that gets blessed, now nah, I got to take care of everybody else. No, I need to bless everybody connected to me. Why? Because when I decide I want to take a trip, I don't need you to wait six months trying to raise the money. Let's go. Y'all ain't hear me. You got your passport? Let's go. All right. What you doing tomorrow? Let's go. All right. Get your seat in your right hand. You've got your best gift in your hand. Raise it as high as you see God taking you. If you want to give on your credit or debit card, come see Trusty Teresa over here. But speak over your seat. Say, the seat I sold today will unlock increase in my future. The seat I sold today will unlock increase in my family. The seat I sold today will unlock increase in my finance. Real loud, say I'm wealthy. I'm prosperous. I'll never be broke again. In Jesus' name.
Amen. I want our tithers to come, and then you're in the hands of our ushers. Praise seems you'll give us some good offering music. Let's bring it with joy. Let's bring it with gladness. Let's get ready to give God praise. Let's go up. love father thank you jesus oh, oh. everything oh lord you're everything to me say everything up your worship to him. Lord, I thank you for being everything. You're everything to me. Lord, I thank you because I have everything I
If it's really wonderful, I said, if it's really wonderful, lift it, lift it, lift it, lift it, lift it, lift it. Grab your Bibles. All praises be to the King of Kings. And 
and the Lord, Lord of Lords, He is one, wonderful, oh, praises, be Psalm 55, to the King of kings and the lord the lord of lords he is one wonderful psalm 55 one verse of scripture that i want to lift in our hearing it's verse 6 where the Lord says, and I said, oh, that I had wings like a dove. For then would I fly away and be at rest. Oh, that I had wings like a dove. For then would I fly away and be at rest. Father, Savior, Healer, God. Before we ask you for anything, we thank you for everything. For this day you've allowed us to see, we say thank you. For the gift of the Holy Ghost, we say thank you. And yes, for the fact that last night was not our last night, we say thank you. Heal, save, and deliver. Bring high places down. Make crooked places straight. Throw your weight around. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Bless your praise team. I want to uh, begin uh, a series on today. Uh, the series is simply entitled The Trauma Trap. The Trauma Trap. But today's particular lesson, I need you to help me get this out. Lift your voice and say, Lord, clip my wings. Uh, Y'all didn't say that like you mean it. I, I know you try. Where are you going, Pastor? Just go with me. Say it again. Say, Lord, Lord clip my wings. Brothers and sisters, saints and friends, give me just a few moments here. Uh, we had such a wonderful time in Bible study on Tuesday night. And uh, let me just put that plug in there now. Tuesdays are a good time at Spirit and Truth. And so uh, you need to make your way. Uh, to the temple on Tuesday. Uh, we're going to be continuing this series on Sundays and Tuesdays, but we introduced the idea in the continuation of conversation around honor and defense. We went a little bit further into uh, the idea of trauma. And I think that it's worth mentioning that trauma is something that everybody in this room, everybody, under the sound of my voice, has to deal with. Amen. The, the guitar going to praise him one way or another. Amen. <laughs> said, forget the rocks crying out. Trey didn't cut me off, so I'm just going to keep on playing. Yeah. That guitar's been traumatized. That's what I'm trying to tell you. And uh, all of us have had to deal with or encounter the idea, the concept of trauma in some way or another. Trauma could best be defined as a deep disturbing or distressing event and the response there it is to that event some people think trauma they immediately and exclusively go to the physical but the truth is trauma can impact you yes physically but also emotionally it can impact you spiritually it can impact you mentally and I'm here to tell someone that yes, physical trauma can be damaging, but what do you say about the fact that sometimes the wounds that you can't see hurt more than the ones that you can? I need to talk back church here at 10 a.m. And we deal with this idea of trauma because if you want to look from a sociological perspective, Dr. Matisa, we, our human psyche, was not built. It was not designed to process the amount of trauma that we subjected to every time. Can we be honest? You open your iPhone or your Android or you cut on your laptop, you turn on your television every time you go to CNN, every time you go to Facebook, you're bombarded with bad news. You're bombarded with a uh, another video, another video of somebody being gunned down. You're bombarded with a video of violence. You're bombarded with news reports of 
issues and calamity not just in your neighborhood but in nations around the world and what it does is it opens us up to a level of trauma that we were not designed by God to process but what I want to challenge us with in this conversation today is that even though you have some trauma in your life there's some of you you have childhood trauma things that you have suppressed and ignored and you have tried to avoid that happened to you as a child things that you saw things that were normalized even though they were not normal some of you it's been relationships that have traumatized you you didn't get married to get divorced you didn't walk down that aisle and say I do not knowing that it wouldn't last forever because while you did the other person didn't it left you with trauma some of you all have had financial trauma some of you all don't know how to manage your money now because you grew up in a financially traumatic environment but what I want to tell someone in the few moments that I have is that the good news we can lean on today is that everybody that God uses greatly hear me has had to overcome some degree of trauma I don't have time to walk down the list but look at all of the great heroes of faith Abraham the father of faith had to deal with the trauma of being told to leave his homeland and step out on a mystery and what does trauma do trauma begets trauma he has a son now named Isaac Isaac has to deal with the trauma of being laid down on an altar and having his daddy raise a knife over his throat listening for a voice that Isaac cannot hear. Somebody say trauma. Yeah, all of those, all, not just the men, but the women in the Bible had to deal with trauma. You better believe the sisters in Scripture had to deal with trauma. Can you imagine the press pressure on a young Esther knowing that the fate of her entire people hinges on how she manages a moment? Trauma. Can we talk about, no, we're not going to talk about Bathsheba because y'all have made Bathsheba the villain in the story and talk about how David didn't survive Bathsheba. David didn't survive by David y'all ain't gonna help me I don't have time for that Bathsheba was a victim okay ah uh, yes yeah, she was your first me too movement uh, you don't have to talk about trauma you can't talk about trauma without talking about Tamar being victimized by her own family's incestuous inability to manage their emotions but I'm here to tell somebody I feel something sneaking up on me early here I'm here to tell somebody that trauma cannot stop the trajectory of your life I need you to pass that down your I need a little volume here, Corey. Tell somebody your trauma cannot stop your trajectory. God still has a plan for your life. God still, hey, thank you. God still has his hand on you. Thank you. God still has a plan. That's there where I want to be. Thank you. And what you have to understand, brothers and sisters, is that because we all deal with trauma, there are several trauma responses that are natural and normal. We typically call them the four F of trauma response. It typically when put in a traumatic situation, something that could cause life or death decisions to be made, there are four responses. One response is to freeze. Uh, you, you know what it is to be sometimes paralyzed by fear. Another response is fawn, which is the attempt to befriend that which is threatening you. There's a dog that's growling at you and inching towards you. Tail, not wagging, no more. He ain't trying to play. You know what it is to try to smile. And, oh, okay. That's a nice dog. You were nice to you making sure your shoes is tied because you're about to take off. Yeah, you're fawning, trying to befriend it to avoid the attack. And then you all know this one. Fight is a trauma response. Some of you said, for now you're talking my talk, Pastor, because that's, that's my one right there. Some of you all, you fight because it's all you've known to do. But then the last of the four, not just freeze, not just fall, not just fight, but everybody say flight flight, the ability to leave, the ability to flee. These are survival mechanisms that help us react quickly to life changing and life threatening situations and that's what David is talking about here in Psalm 55. He is talking about the temptation to fly away because what David wants us to understand is that your wounds always have roots. Can I preach to somebody in here and tell you your wounds all 
always have roots. Sometimes, you know what we do? We mismanage people because all we see is the wound, but we never ask God for discernment concerning the root. And when you look at David, his wounds have roots. His daddy rejected him. You remember when the prophet shows up and says, I'm here to anoint one of your sons. His daddy does not call his name. He rejects him. That's a wound. He then finds mentorship in Saul, the current king. But Saul turns on him and tries to kill him. Wounds. He ends up marrying a woman by the name of Michal who does not love him. Nowhere in scripture does the Bible refer to her as David's wife. It always refers to her as Saul's daughter. Somebody say wounds. Uh, yeah, let's look deeper. You looked at his mistakes, but let's look at the root of his wounds that informed his trauma. He gets older, raises a son by the name of Absalom, and Absalom tries to take the kingdom from him. His wounds all have roots, and that leads us to Psalm 55. This psalm was written at the end of David's life. He has gone through all of these traumatic experiences. He has endured all of these traumatic moments only to get to a place where he now has to deal with betrayal. I, I wish I had maybe somebody in here that would help me preach and just open your mouth and say betrayal. Oh, I know it doesn't even feel good to say, but it's a necessary conversation because what we see here is that David is dealing with and describing his interaction with who was a friend at one time that has now betrayed him. He says in verses 12 through 14, he says, it was not an enemy that reproached me. Then I could have borne it. Neither was it he that hated me that did magnify himself against me. Then I could of him but he said it was thou a man mine equal my guide my acquaintance we took counsel together and walked in the house of God in company I'm here to free somebody from the chains of conviction or condemnation that think that something is wrong with you because I'm here to tell you that betrayal can be traumatic nobody wants to shout about this but we're going to get better in a minute betrayal can be traumatic psychologists agree that betrayal is one of the worst kinds of emotional pain a human can experience hear me you know why because what makes betrayal so bad is that betrayal never comes from an enemy hmm. Lord help me preach it here today betrayal never comes from an enemy it is only possible to betray what you once be friend it. Ah, yeah, and can I go further? Because the longer, hear me, and the deeper and the more uh, 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 intense the relationship with the betrayer was, the more severe the pain is over the betrayal. In other words, the longer you've known them, the longer you supported them, the longer you pushed them, the longer you showed up for them, the longer you had their back, the longer you kept their secrets. You're not talking to me. The longer you you were there, the betrayal is intensified because it puts you in a place of wondering who can I trust? Can I talk to somebody? There's some of y'all in this room that have been dubbed antisocial. And all oh, you know, they funny at you. And the truth is, you're not antisocial, you're just anti-betrayal. And sometimes you look like the last person that hurt me. And so to protect my peace, to protect my mental health, I won't let you get close enough to hurt me because the last person I let in your spot stabbed me in the back. But I'm here to tell somebody that God wants to heal you from your trauma so that you can learn how to trust again. Touch somebody on your left, on your right, and tell them, neighbor, I will trust again. Oh no, I need you to preach. Come on, y'all looking at me funny. Tell somebody to say, I will survive. I will. Uh, I will. I'm coming through this. I'm coming out of this. Uh, I will not die here. I will not stay here. Depression will not be my testimony. Suicide is not my answer. I will come through this trauma. And here's what the Lord, yes, sir, I feel freedom in here. Here's what the Lord said to tell you there. There are three temptations for the traumatized. Number one, the traumatized have to avoid 
avoid the temptation, hear this, uh, of avoidance. Uh, uh, help me preach, everybody say avoidance. Uh, that, that's what David talks about when he says, I wish I had wings to fly away. Avoidance, uh, according to the National Institute of Health, is typically considered a maladaptive behavioral response to excessive fear and anxiety. Here it is, which leads to the maintenance of anxiety disorders. In other words, when you avoid that thing that God has allowed you to endure, when you keep running from it, when you don't face it, when you won't be honest with yourself or with God or with people, what you end up doing is nursing your issue. You end up maintaining your dysfunction. And anything that you nurse, where my mother's at it here, anything that you nurse, mama, is going to grow. And that's what's happened to some of our pain. You nursed it, and then you wonder why it got bigger. That's what happened to some of our dysfunction. You nursed it, and then you wonder why it got bigger. That's what happened, let's talk about it, to some of our church hurt. You have nursed it, and then you wonder why it got bigger. That's why some folk take maintain relationship they keep nursing the trauma that's why some people can't keep a job they keep nursing the trauma and so because they keep avoiding the issue and letting God fix it the issue just keeps on getting bigger but I'm talking to somebody in here and I speak over your life as a man of God today that God is about to give you the wisdom to stop nursing what God wants to free you from can I have a witness in here somewhere that could tell somebody next to you, say, neighbor, it's over now. He said, number one, tell you that you have to avoid the temptation of avoiding. You have to, there it is, avoid avoidance. Ah, yes, yeah, sometimes as uncomfortable as it is, you've got to sit there, square your shoulders, and say, I'm not leaving this season until I believe God for the inner healing I need. I'm not leaving this moment until I believe God to give me the strength to face what happened because I cannot avoid what I want God to heal if I face it he'll fix it hallelujah to God but then the second thing is when you're traumatized can I talk to you you have to avoid the temptation hear this of resting in unsafe places uh, ask your neighbor say neighbor where are you resting no, ask them. It's a real question. Where are you resting? Because whenever you're traumatized, look at what David says. He says in verse 7, he says, I wish that I had these wings. Why? So that I could wander off. I'm in verse 7. And remain in the wilderness. Wait a minute, David. What do you mean wander off and remain in the wilderness? You're looking for, he ends it by saying, Selah. Ain't that crazy? He's looking for peace but he's talking about wandering off in the wilderness can I remind you anybody all the parents in here all the big brothers big sisters you learned as a child we're going in this store don't you dare what wander off because wandering never has a positive connotation when the children of Israel were wandering in the wilderness for 40 years they were not on a tour they were not on a scenic route they were lost and they were stuck in transition and that's what some of you all are doing when you allow your trauma to cause you to run and fly away you end up in unsafe places looking for rest because what trauma wants to do is force you to lean into your emotions and you end up being emotion driven come here instead of spirit led in that some of our testimony I wouldn't have got my heart broke if I wasn't emotion driven I wouldn't have ended up in that situation if I wasn't emotion driven I wouldn't have had that problem if I wasn't emotion driven I should have been spirit led but what happened I ended up resting in unsafe places and that's where some of you all are right now you're resting in what feels good you're resting on the shoulders of someone that feels good but can I preach to you and tell you that feelings can be fatal I don't need something
thing that feels good God I want what is good and I'm here to preach to you and tell you that God is about to deliver you and expose every unsafe place that you've been seeking refuge in that friend that is not really your friend I pray that God reveals it before you get deeper that spouse uh, or that potential spouse that does not mean your destiny any good I'm praying that God shows you before you get your heart too in deep because what you cannot do is rest in unseen places well pastor I'm stressed I'm traumatized I'm hurting I don't know where to go when my heart is overwhelmed lead me to the rock that is higher than I. I need you to open your mouth and just give God glory because God says I'm getting ready to give you the right place to lay your head. Hallelujah to God. I'm closing and getting ready to get out of this service today. But God said to tell you that when you're traumatized, you have to avoid the temptation of resting in unseen places. You have to avoid the temptation of avoidance and flying away. Because the danger is you slide into isolation. I've got to talk to some of you all that have been fighting your traumas and tell you that part of the trap of the trauma is to get you isolated and by yourself because when you're isolated you're vulnerable but you're also dangerous you're vulnerable to the lies of the enemy when you're isolated the devil would tell you that nobody loves you when you're isolated the devil would tell you that you're all by yourself and the church don't care about you when you're isolated the devil would tell you that you're all wrong in church but I want to tell somebody that the other side of isolation is that the worst version of you comes up because David ends up praying a wrong prayer he says in verse 15 speaking about his enemies he said let death seize upon them and let them go down quick in the hell for wickedness is in their dwellings and wickedness is among them and you know why that's a problem don't you because David is an anointed man of God he should have been praying that God would save them but he's praying that God will send them to hell because his traumas informed his prayer life but I came to preach to somebody and tell you that God's about to take the trauma out so that you can pray like you're supposed to instead of cursing those that curse you you're going to learn how to say Lord bless them that despitefully use me bless them that trying to destroy me come on everybody let's go look at your neighbor and say neighbor I don't know about you but I'm coming out of isolation and I'm breaking the back of trauma because I've got too much that's on the inside to let trauma stop my future because what you got to know is that when you avoid and when you isolate you rob God of a chance to vindicate because David goes through emotions and says Lord I'm overwhelmed and I don't know what to do he says Lord I wish I could fly away and just wander in the wilderness he said Lord I wish you would kill my enemies and send them to hell but verse 16 is where we find hope at he says in spite of all of this he said I will call upon the Lord and the Lord shall save me grab your neighbor's hand and say neighbor that's my trauma response I'll call on the Lord and he will save me he said even in morning will I pray and he shall hear my voice I came to talk to the traumatized and tell you you feel like you've been by yourself you feel nobody and the 
understand your pain but the Lord said I hear your voice I'm near the brokenhearted I hear your voice I saw the abuse and I hear your voice I saw the mismanage and I hear your voice and I'm giving you the power to face your trauma because you can't run no more because as long as you're running it means you're scared and if you're scared it controls you and I came to tell somebody that the breakers in the house and I won't deny what happened to you but I will deny it's power to control you grab your neighbor by the hand and say neighbor oh neighbor don't fly away say lord clip my wings give me the power to stay right here and trust in trauma give me the power to stand flat footed and give my trauma to you because if i run from it you don't get the glory i'm saying you delivered me if i avoid it you don't get the glory i'm showing the world that you can turn it around don't clip my wings i won't fly away i'll stand and tell the world i know somebody that can heal your hurt i know somebody if you turn it over god will make a way i want everybody in here that can give god praise because it didn't let you fly away open your mouth and give him praise and give him praise and give him praise say it Everybody standing. I'm not out of message, I'm out of time. Lord, clip my wings. Lord, clip my wings. If you don't clip my wings, I'll fall into the trap of avoidance and I'll leave a situation that's uncomfortable to go to something that's not going to help me get healed. Lord, clip my wings because if you don't, I'm going to end up resting in unsafe places. If it's left up to me, I'm going to fly to the wilderness and wander because let me help you, trauma has a way of making you feel that anything is better than this thing. What the devil wants to do is get you resting in unsafe places. Resting on the shoulders of somebody that doesn't mean you any good. Resting on the arms of someone that doesn't plan to help you. But I'm declaring over you, you will no longer have rest in unsafe places. God's getting ready to show you who's who and what's what. Then God says that I can't let you fly away. I got to clip your wings. Because if I don't, you're going to end up in isolation. And that's where the enemy wants to hurt you. But God is saying, even though you're traumatized, I need you to trust me in your trauma. Don't run from it. Because if you run from it, you ready? You're not going to be able to see me fix it. Don't run from it, because if you run from it, you won't be able to watch me work it out. God is saying, David gives us the key to our trauma. We got to find our way to verse 16. Yeah, you might have to walk through the verses to talk about hurt and pain and isolation, but don't stop walking until you get to verse 16, because it's in verse 16 that he reaches a point. He says, you know what? As for me, though, I'm going to call on God, and he shall save me. I want to open this altar for everybody that's honest enough to say, Lord, I've got some trauma, but I'm calling on you. And I'm believing that you're going to save me.
If I'm talking to you and you need prayer today, get out of your seat and get to this altar. Because God says, today I'm going to save. Today I'm going to heal. Today I'm going to deliver. God says, I want you to trust me with your trauma. Come now, come now, come now. Let these men and women of God pray with you. Come now, come now, come now, come now, come now. Come now, come now, come now. Come on, come on, come on. One time say, wash me over again. Come on. Wash me over again. Say it. In your precious blood. Wash me over again. One more time say, wash me over Wash me over again In your precious blood In your precious blood Wash me over Wash me over again One more time say Wash Wash me over over again Say Wash Wash me me over I will not be trapped by trauma I will not, I will not in your precious blood. Wash, 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 wash. One more time, just say it. Wash me over again. Wash me over, over, over again. Oh. Me, wash, me, wash me, wash me. There might be one more that needs prayer today. Come on, come on, say, wash me. Oh, trauma is a trap, but I'm not staying in it. I'm getting free. I will be free. Oh, wash me over. One more time, wash me over. Yeah. I don't hear enough of y'all saying it. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. In your precious blood. In your precious blood, say, in your precious Wash me over in your precious blood. In your precious blood. Wash me over. Wash me over. Listen, there might be somebody here. That's I I needed this. I I don't want to admit it, but I've been avoiding some stuff. I've been flying away. This is why some folk leave churches over small spats. Somebody didn't speak to you and now ain't no love in the church. That's not the issue. You're projecting years of problems in other places on this particular situation. And if you leave again, you know what you're doing? You're just continuing the cycle of avoidance. God can't fix what you won't face. But maybe God had you here today because this is the church that God wants to heal you in. Maybe, maybe you came today because God wants to help you get free from that trauma. And you recognize that I need to be a part of this ministry. If I'm talking to you, man, woman, boy, girl, and you want to be a part of this ministry, I want you to get out of your seat. I want you to come now. If you know that, they, come here. If you know that this is the place God has you, if you know that this is the place God wants you to be, I want you to get out of your seat and come now. Come now, come now, come now. Can y'all help me praise God for those coming from the north, the south, the east, and the west? Can you help me? Listen, here's what I want to do. Here's what I want to do. I want you to take 10 seconds right where you stand. And I want you, I mean it, I want you to give God the absolute best praise you can. Because God just broke the trap. One, two, three. Go, 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 go. Come on, come on, for about 15 more seconds. Come on, open up your mouth. Hey, hey, hey. Come on, come on, lift it up as high as you want God to bless you. Open up your mouth. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. We are going down from here. Come on, you can have your seats. We are about to dismiss in the name of Jesus. Did you just, were you blessed by the word on today? Come on, let me hear you. Were you blessed? Amen. We are about to go down from here. We thank God for the word of God. Let's thank God for our pastor right now, our senior pastor. Amen. At this time, at this time, before we leave, listen, we want to sow a seed into this word. Uh, what I know about seed is it breaks cycles. Somebody say it breaks cycles. Seed breaks cycles. So I need you to do what I'm about to do. I'm going to ask Minister Virginia, if you would get my phone for me, I want, I'm going to give $20 in this offering now. And I'm going to ask somebody to just join me really quickly. It doesn't have to take us a long time, but we just want to sow into what God is doing. Do you believe that this is good ground? Come on. I said, do you believe that this is good ground? I don't know if you've heard, but there's been some debt cancellation happening. Can I tell you, God canceled $100,000 of my student loan debt. I can't get no praises. Anybody else got a student loan in here? $100,000 gone because I've been sowing into this ministry. Somebody gave me a testimony yesterday. $275,000 gone in canceled debt. Now, I don't know if you believe it or not. You don't have to believe it, but you can believe me. When I say I got a zero balance, I've got a zero balance. And it's because I've always given seed because you know what? God gives seed to the what? The sower. So if there are any sowers in here, maybe it's not debt cancellation. Maybe it's something else that you want God to do. I dare you. I double dog dare you to sow into what God is doing. We're going to do this very quickly. If that's you, if you're giving, I saw Sister Jessica already. Anybody giving 20, stand to your feet really quickly, really quickly. Thank you, thank you. Look at God. Come on, thank you. Thank you, woman of God. Thank you, woman of God. Thank you, woman of God. Thank you, associate pastor. Come on, y'all can clap, clap, clap. Thank you, man of God. Thank you. Maybe you're not, you're not able to give 20, but if you can at least give 10. We don't want to give less than 10. Will you stand? I see you standing now. Stand, stand, stand. Get your best gift, gift and stand all over this building. The ways to give are right here on your screen. Stand with me. Whatever your best gift is, I want you to stand. Thank you. Thank you. And when we do this, when we stand, we all do it how? We do it together. Thank you. Everybody is standing. The ways to give are right here on your screen. We want to thank God for all of the announcements. Uh, we'll go over them in more detail at 12 o'clock. Our men's weekend is coming up. We thank God for that. Pastor talked about the conversations that he's having over the next several weeks. We have a lot of amazing things going on at Spirit and Truth. Anybody besides me excited about what God is doing? Amen. So as you're giving, you're giving, if you are giving uh, by cash, you can come up right now. We, we just want you to walk on up to the receptacle. If you're giving electronically, you can do that here. Do that however, however you can. We are moving. We're going to our other service. Anybody going to our noon service? Some people are moving. If you're not, we say thank you for being here today. We're going to see you next week. If you're going to the noon service, we want you to be safe and don't get pulled over by the police. So we want you to be safe and drive the way that we know we can, but we'll meet you right over there. We are now about to dismiss. If you're giving, don't forget give now. And as we dismiss, we thank you, God. Thank you for your word. Thank you, oh God, that you don't just, you touch us spiritually, but also psychologically, emotionally. You care about all of us. Thank you. You are a holistic God, and we give you glory for that. Thank you, oh God, for the deliverance that's happened in this house. Thank you for every yoke that's been destroyed by the anointing. Thank you, oh God, that we're leaving different. Thank you, oh God, that we're leaving better. Better. Thank you, oh God, that we are no longer trapped by trauma. Hallelujah. But we declare freedom in this house. We thank you, oh God, for that freedom. We ask you to dismiss us from this place, but never from your presence. This we ask in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. And it's in Jesus' name that we say amen and amen. Love on your sister and brother in Jesus' name.
Thank you for being a part of our Spirit and Truth virtual experience today. We pray that you felt the divine presence of God and received the life-changing word that has the power to transform your life. Remember, this is not the end, but just the beginning of a deeper relationship with God and connection here at Spirit and Truth. And last but not least, remember, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth.